Hello everyone, it's Tanya with Scribbles in Time. Welcome to the video. If you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. Um, you may notice that my voice is a little bit hoarse. It kind of comes and goes. It gets stronger sometimes than than others. So just please bear with me. I'm I'm sorry if it's grinding or grating on to the um the, to the ears, but um, I'm I'm doing the best I can with it. Um, I'm a talker. I love to talk. So. Um, and, you know, the doctor, the surgeon, they said, literally, use your voice. It's good for it to use it through this healing process. So I was like, okay, y'all have given me full permission to use the voice. Here I go. So anyway, um, with that being said, I have really struggled with this whole thing of not being able to talk real good because I have good days and bad days with it. And there's some days where I can't even hardly talk on the phone because people can't hear me very well. So anyway, I've spent a lot of time in my craft room, and if you know anything about me, I'm a mess. I'm, I'm always a hot mess. <laughs> I, my craft room, one of my least favorite things to do is to clean when I'm done with a journal. I almost um, get inspired when I have a lot of stuff on my desk, so my desk always looks pretty bad, and I decided to tackle the craft room. I've been reorganizing in a way that I've never done before ever, but I just feel like I've never had this amount of time to spend in there, and um, anyway, so with that being said, I have packed up stuff to literally move to different areas. I've been completely doing things that I've been wanting to do for a long time in that room, and so I've been working on it, but in the, in the process, I cannot find my filming arm that holds my you know, the little mount thing that you use when you're filming a video that holds my phone in place for me to actually film the video. So I have rigged up something totally, <laughs> it's, it's not very secure, I'll put it like that. It's, it's a cell phone holder that um, I normally use beside my, my chair and I'm using it as a camera mount right now. And it is just at a wonky angle. In fact, let me see if I can look into the screen. Okay, so I'm kind of sitting at it. I'm sorry. Y'all, this is, uh, I'm, I'm gonna, I can't like turn my arm sideways. I will try to do this flip through as best as I can <laughs> to show the journal the best that I can. But um, this journal is absolutely, I always say that each journal is one of my favorites. In fact, Waverly that I filmed a while back, I decided to keep Waverly. And I've never even posted her in my Etsy shop. And I've done a couple of things in her, so I'm going to show that towards the end of the video, just in case anyone wants to come back and, um, you know, look to see what changes were made in her. But um, I'll be showing Waverly just a couple of changes at the very end of the video so that I can get her posted on my Etsy. Um, this one is called 379 um, Pearl Lane. So 379 Pearl Lane is going to be the name of this latest journal. Obviously she has the number 379 on there. And um, well, I'm trying to look into my camera and I don't know if I hit it or if it's glitching, but anyway, let's just roll through this together. My point to all of that was um, at the end of this video, I'll show a little flip through of Waverly, but I have absolutely had so much fun going back to my old styles. Um, I had kind of switched around and was making journals kind of, um, just in a very low-key, um, kind of, I'm not going to say generic. All journals are just unique in their own way, but I wasn't doing my old style, I guess is what I'm trying to portray there. And so I have finally gone back home <laughs> to making my journals in my style that makes me so happy. And so I guess that has just brought me a lot of joy. So let's go ahead and look at 379. Um, 379 Pearl Lane is the name of this one, and let's go, I keep calling her 379 but in my head, but anyway, so let's go ahead and take a look at her, and I guess to start out with, um, I was very much influenced by Waverly, they're very similar in style, you'll see that, um, but I, I kind of went a different direction with 379, and one of the things I started off doing was I was going to use a clipboard on the inside cover here, and um, instead of doing it on the inside cover, and the reason for that is because I love using clipboards as press boards now. I do that a lot of times when I'm just sitting in front of the TV. I'll put art paper 
on to a clipboard. I'll have all my sketching stuff in a, a little decorative box that I keep there. And I'll just sit there and sketch while I'm watching TV. So I love clipboards. I have uh, so many clipboards. This is a clipboard kind of off screen over here. Um, with just a bunch of kind of aged paper. And yeah, on this one I went through and, and kind of did some of the... Um, am I in frame? I kind of went through and did some of the seals and embossing and um, kind of the aging of the paper to use in the journal. And I'll explain that in just a minute. So this isn't technically art paper. This is more for journaling. And the reason I did that is because I didn't leave a lot of space in this book for actual journaling. This is definitely done more in the style of an art book. And I always like to have a way to journal. So if you've ever watched my videos, you know I usually leave tabs in journals to attach pages to. So I've done that in this one. And um, yeah, let's go ahead and get measurements and kind of move forward. Um, so she has all kind of stuff poking out. Again, I'm sorry if I'm not in frame. But I would say somewhere around maybe 10 inches with all of the... Um, you know, embellishments and everything that pokes out. And then coming width-wise, I would say probably around seven and a half. And then the thickness of her, which I do make my journals if you're new to my channel. I love making this style of journal in a way to where it sits out like on a coffee table and it almost looks like a box, um, like a decorative box. And the purpose of that is just to evoke conversation, draw attention and make something look just unique and different. So it, it is tall, and they're not really made to go on a bookshelf. Um, but with that being said, I'd say it's right around four and three quarters in height um, if it's sitting out on a table. And um, things that are showing from the outside when you look at the cover, let me see if I can turn it kind of this way. So I have used a pen. This is a vintage and I did get this at an antique shop. Um, I don't know how old it is. Don't know any details about it. But let me hold it up so you can see. There are pearls. And um, I've attached that around this beautiful trim here. And onto a, a plank of wood. I've drilled through the wood and attached the number 379 at the bottom. And then I have this beautiful um, vintage lace hanging from that. And then just all kind of layering here. You'll see fabric poking out. Um, there it says Scribbles in Time, which I always say that is the name of my, my YouTube channel and my shop and everything. But to me, it's just such a um, statement of, of um, what we all should be doing. We should be leaving our scribbles in time, our marks and our timeline. And so that's kind of why I like using that on my journals is because it is telling you to put your scribbles in time that should contain that in journaling or art. Um, there's a piece of metal here to look like a tab. Um, some beautiful vintage black buttons on the spine. This um, um, beautiful fabric, it has like a little ruffle coming down this edge, coming down the front. Um, I got that from Vintage Polka Dot Shop on Etsy. And um, then here there is a book layered in. We'll get to that in a minute. But right here, I love this. It says, very respectfully yours. And I just wanted to put that along the edge. So it says, very respectfully yours. Hanging out of the center of the signature of this little book here, there is a zipper pull. And then this, um, like a eternity, in, like a little twirling charm and so I've put that there let me see if I'm trying to get it to, there we go so it looks round when you open all the pieces up like that and I have that to where it kind of hangs out there the side of the journal looks like that I keep trying to peek into my camera and it keeps looking like as I move things the film is jumping so I hope it's not doing that um, typically this clipboard is inside of the back of the journal, which I have used the front cover of the book as the back. But, so the back typically looks like that when the clipboard is in place. And then there's two vintage buttons here with a piece of ribbon coming down that edge of the fabric. Okay, from the side view, it looks like that. Just a bunch of um, kind of a waterfall look coming out. 
And then I think that kind of shows you the outside of the journal. Um, so let's go ahead and open the art book up and you'll see that um, on the inside here, can, am I even in frame? So I've put a little loop of trim right here with a paintbrush in it. And that's, of course, removable. There's buttons here. Um, this paintbrush has been used. It is grunged. You can see paint down in it. This is one that I have used many times. Um, and it's in there. It, of course, can be cleaned. Um, let's go ahead and talk about this little journal here, the art book that's laying here on the inside of the cover. So, I did a book made completely of the tabs. If y'all have ever watched my videos, y'all know how I leave tabs throughout where you can go in and attach stuff. So I thought it would be fun that this little bag, um, D made this with the paper drawer. Um, she has an Etsy and YouTube as well. And I have included this little bag in here in between the signatures like that. And then I've created this little journal, this book here. It's made out of an old book by Longfellow, Hiawatha. And I did it completely with tabs. So it's like this, nothing but tabs, and it is art paper with gesso. It's mixed media paper, actually, with gesso. And all this back here is where I stitched through all of these books to attach them and attach stuff onto the front. So it's just really grungy. There's braille paper lining the book. And then all of these tabs are made to where you could either paint on them but you could also attach stuff in there. And when I say attach stuff, I mean the journal pages that are on that clipboard. You could literally journal and then glue those papers onto this to create a little book, um, tear them down to fit, of course, and create your book that way. Or I've included in the little pouch all of these um, beautiful, like, um, grunged up, postcard type things and so just to give you an illustration like you could go in glue that one there I hope I'm in frame let's see you could glue this one here I'm just going to kind of go through and just give you an example if anybody purchases this and they want me to do the gluing of these in here that's fine the only reason I didn't is because I want to give somebody the opportunity to put their own artwork in there or their own photos postcards, whatever it is that brings you joy, you can put your own stuff in here and make it uniquely yours. But I included these in case someone, you know, doesn't have a good stash of stuff they want to use. You could always attach these down and then attach something on top of them. It's just, the, you know, your imagination is limitless, should be limitless. But I put all these in here to kind of so yeah, you just literally glue all this stuff to these tabs. These tabs are securely attached inside of this book. So once you um, glue these all onto these tabs, they then become pages like that. So I'm just going to go through and kind of, you know what, I think I would probably do her kind of like that. So I would, if this was all I had, I would space these apart a little bit. We're probably going to end up with extras at the end though. Let's see, do them like that. Attach one there. Yeah, we're gonna have a lot more left over, I believe. But this gives you an example. I guess I could save some for the tabs in there to show you options. This just shows you different options of things you can do. Attach all these to these tabs and it creates a book. These are the these become the pages of the book. I love that one. That's my favorite. But these do become the pages of the book as you go through and attach them. And that's the last one there. So yeah, so see. And then when you close it after you attach all those, you have yourself a little book. If you choose to attach these, like I say, you could attach anything you wanted to in there. Also, I forgot to mention on the front, I did leave this little frame open here. Um, it's very tight, but if you had like an old picture or something you wanted to slide in there, you, you can do that. I left that open back there so that something could be slid behind this piece of glass. 
if someone chose to do that. I did that on Waverly, so you can kind of see what I'm talking about with Waverly. See, this is removable behind that. The same concept with this one. I, I left that so that you could slide something in there if you chose to. All right, so that's kind of the purpose of this book, is creating your own pages in this. I wanted it to be to where you create it to be you. Um, so yeah, that would create a little book there. And then when we flip over here, we have the first page, and there's just a piece of um, like cellophane with a piece of pressed um, plant that I have from my yard. And um, I put a piece of grungy tape and just stitched it inside of the cellophane. I love the sound of that. Um, or maybe it's acetate. I forget what you call that. But anyway, I attached this little gold tab here. But I did leave it blank if you wanted to slide a piece of paper in there with your date of birth, your year of birth, anything at all that just is a little reminder of you. Put it in that tab. Um, and then the pages are just grunged up. I've started layering for people who enjoy to do uh, mixed media. Uh, most of the pages do have a good base on them that you can start attaching, whether it's you know photos or artwork or pages from the clipboard that you've journaled on. You can just start attaching those over the pages. Um, this is a beautiful piece of um, doy like a doily. Um, this has the gesso on this page. This really cool old, old piece of fabric up here. That's actually a piece of a fabric flower um, that I had. And it's my last piece. I loved it so much. It's kind of striped, if you can't tell. And then, of course, more of the um, layered paper, grunged up. This I would consider a tab where you could attach something to work, serve as a page like a photograph or a journaling page, whatever you want to attach to the tabs. I think I'm running that into the ground, aren't I? <laughs> so anyway, I'll put that back in the pouch to go with the journal. Um, there is a wooden ruler on the edge of this page um, that says Amazing Grace. Um, it's a stamp I have, and I stamped it onto, I think that's a piece of wallpaper, and attached it there. There's a little bitty angel right here. Another piece of the lace, some more of the layering and um, gesso. And then right here is a piece of wallpaper, or more of the layering here. You can see in between the signatures here, and that is normally where this pouch would be. And then um, this is a piece of wallpaper, and I did it kind of like a little flip out there so that you could do some hidden journaling here or a little piece of hidden artwork there. And then this is kind of left open if you wanted to slide, um, again, some art paper or anything at all into there just for added personality. That's kind of left open like a little tuck spot there. Okay, and I love that little picture. There's another one coming up with a little girl, so that's looks to be a little boy with his little soldiers. I think that's so precious piece of wallpaper and then here's the little girl holding her dolly I have a little girl I have a daughter and a son they're not little anymore um but anyway so I love just doing the little things that remind me of my my babies um there's just it's just grunge dyed this this journal is so grungy um but some ticket numbers poking out here a piece of cluster there a piece of um pretty pretty fabric trim as a tab and then this one flips up with some mixed media paper here and here and um yeah when you flip there's just more of the layering and grunged paper um this is a real pretty um i don't know if that would have been considered a a um placemat or a little coaster type of of square maybe it was made to go on a quilt i don't really know um i did do a wooden cross hanging out of that one it does barely show through on the outside of the journal. Um, now here I, I stitched a stick on to the edge of this page. And it's a big stick, as you can see. Um, and then I attached this little tabs. Again, my thought process was whoever gets this could attach pages onto this tab to create like a little booklet here, like so. And again, that's something you could use paper with journaling, or you could paint directly on these. There's gesso on this mixed media paper. And that's all just stitched around this stick with um, just some sloppy 
hand stitching there. And then um, more of the layering with gessos and little pieces of paper, pieces all out of photo albums, old photo albums. Here's another little tab to attach something to, like that. Real pretty trim, some I like trim there. And then um, here you can see in between the signatures, I've attached some buttons there just to add to just to draw the eye. And then on this piece of placemat, I bunched it together and attached buttons onto that. Um, this is just some doodling I did. Um, I, I love to sit and doodle, and um, typically what I'll do is I'll put gesso on a page like I've done back here on all these pages. But what I'll do is then I look at the gesso and see kind of like when you're looking at clouds in the sky, how you create images when you're looking at the clouds. I kind of do that with the gesso. So this gesso had been on this page, and to me it had the look of a bird. And so then what I'd start doing, I, I do this sometimes just as a mindless activity while I'm watching TV. I'll start outlining the gesso and creating whatever picture I'm seeing in the clouds. <laughs> Um, and so that's what I did here. I just had fun with it. I, I did it as an abstract. In my mind at first, I was thinking of a, a phoenix. Um, so, but then I started looking at it and thinking of a hummingbird. So somehow this is a mix between a phoenix and a hummingbird. And then I just did the um, where the splotches of gesso were on the page. I just outlined them and made flowers out of them. And then there's a piece of um, wrapping paper tape down here so that's why I say on all these pages where I have paper and gesso like see I could see this being a flower right here and then a little bird coming off the side of it like a little hummingbird right there does that does anybody else see that it's like making pictures in, out of clouds so anyway yeah I could see a little hummingbird there with a, a side view of a flower here that almost looks like it has the veins of a leaf so I turned that into a leaf, but yeah, a tiny little hummingbird head there with a little bitty beak. Can you see that? Just start making your images out of your abstracts. Does that make sense? Anyway, all of my pages I do line with fabric just to add integrity so that if you're using water, um, the water, it has, it just provides a little bit more stability to the paper by having that fabric there at the fold um, to help, you know, collect the water until you have time to dry it as you're working. Um, these are some leaves just out of my yard. They I call them my fall leaves. If I end up having to keep this journal, if it doesn't sell and I, I keep it, I'll probably start doing some stitching just to practice my stitching down this piece of um, cloth here. It's like a canvas um, twine or something. Um, and then more tabs to attach paper right there. And I just tied a piece of fabric that I had laying on my desk here because I thought it kind of drew the eye to this. Um, this is something my friend Dee made. I think I accidentally might have stitched it in with my ribbon here. Yeah, I did. And um, I love that. She just, I think she may have done that when she was making these bags. I'm not real sure, to be honest. Oh, where's the bag? Here it is. So see, you can kind of see what she must have done. Um, and then the pages here. That's some more of that wrapping paper I showed you from where I did the little bird picture. And then that's the last page. This is the um, back side of that placemat or um, doily there with more buttons on it. And then the clipboard. And I just kind of grunged it up. This whole book, like I said, is extremely grungy. And so that completes the flip through of 379 Pearl Lane. And um, I'm going to go ahead and open her back up and take all of these pieces out real quickly to put back into the um, bag. And these, again, they're just all grunged up. Beautiful pictures okay. and then this one so I'm just gonna put these back into this little pouch stick the pouch right over here if you're interested in this journal please look at the link below I will have the link to this journal 
um, listed below for it in my Etsy. And um, if if it's not in my Etsy, if I've either, either taken it down to keep or if it's a long time from now and you're watching this video and you don't see it in the Etsy, um, feel free to reach out to me. I'm not really doing custom orders, but I, I do keep a list if anyone's interested in a journal down the line. Um, I can make journals and send you private listings or pictures so that um, if it's one you're interested in, we can do it that way. Waverly, I filmed a video of Waverly, gosh, probably, I don't know how long ago, maybe a month or two months ago, um, something like that. I, I want to think it was prior to my surgery, but it might have been right after my surgery. And um, so I'm not going to really do a full flip through, but I'm trying to remember what I've added to Waverly. And I only, right now, I only remember one thing, and it was because I sketched something um, into the sketch portion. That's just a little bookmark there. I should have put the bookmark wherever I... Oh, here it is. It's a rabbit. Um, so that's one thing that's different is on this page I've put a rabbit. That's not very much change. Um, I'm trying to... Oh, here I did a wool felting. I don't know if you've all... If anyone else has tried wool felting, I did a wool felting and just kind of stapled it in here. Again, I thought I was keeping the journal, so... I had done this um, with the intentions of keeping, and uh, if I ever get good enough, I might make some with these as the covers, but for right now, I was just practicing. I had bought up this stuff to work on it um, while I recovered from my, my surgery, and had so much fun doing that, and if you haven't ever tried wool felting, it, it is fun. It, for, to me, it was a little bit harder um, than I had expected to make uh, image look like an image but it's almost like your wa your watercoloring with felt so it, it, it is fun um so yeah that's a wool felting that took <laughs> I can't even tell you the number of hours this took me it, it, it took probably eight hours for me to make this um it is for me it was kind of time consuming but anyway there's that and then I think this pocket right here is new and I did that one day because I was trying to find somewhere to hold on to, I had to pocket here with the brittle book pages from the Waverly book um, to where if I ever wanted to make another stack of the pages, I had those there, but I wanted some mixed media paper one day for sketching, and so I added a pocket on, and I stuck myself just some little scraps in here, because that's what I love to actually practice on when I'm sitting around watching TV, it's just little, that's what I did with the rabbit, wherever it's at, I had done the rabbit right here, on a small piece of um, mixed media paper I had, and I just sat there and sketched out the rabbit. I haven't even put my name on it. Again, um, I was doing personal things in this journal, thinking I was going to keep it, but and I may end up, you know, if it doesn't sell, I might end up still keeping it. But but the full flip through of, of Waverly is on a video already, so I'm not going to do another flip through. I think that's everything. I'm trying to remember if there was anything else I was going to mention. Um, okay, I think that's everything. I'm not going to sit here and waste time, so let me go ahead and call it. I hope you all have a very blessed day. Get out there and let your light shine. Know that you're loved. I love you all. Let me know if you have any questions. My email is scribblesintime at gmail.com. Much love to you all.